Good morning, folks. You are looking at a side-by-side -side of ionized helium in red and ionized iron in yellow. It was a relatively calm day on our star, but we've got weather and science news, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. The coronal holes are turning towards the far side. The bright equatorial active area continues underproducing. Meanwhile, south of that and just behind in rotation is another bright spot. We'll be monitoring that one for sunspot development today. Let's go to the solar wind and find the telemetry is relatively stabilized and in calm condition. The last of the streams was minor and has left Earth's geomagnetic field calm and quiet. Now on to the weather. We're going to the Arabian Sea because that first cyclone is now petering out off the Arabian coastline as the eastern system strengthens and is forecast to dance about for a good while here in the northwest Indian Ocean. In about five days, the forecast has it rushing the west coast of India. We will update this one towards the end of the weekend. To the east of that in Malaysia, it has been horrendous flooding. Not so much in one fell swoop of a storm, but a lasting restraint on life for weeks. Thousands lost power last night up the eastern portion of the country as the low finally reached the Appalachians and the convergence tore up the range and then the coastline, battering Gulf states up to Maine. And what's behind it is a bigger story, the cold wave. Records continue being smashed, not just for cold, but for snow. This was indeed the second record-breaking cold system of the month. Let's begin the science articles first with a look at planetary habitability. In an excellent piece here, they acknowledge that it's not just about how much sunlight is received by the planet, but a balance between needing to be close enough not to freeze while still being far enough away that the radiation and magnetic fields associated with solar flares and coronal mass ejections doesn't sterilize your entire planet. This study took a different approach than previous studies to have reached the same conclusion, studying the interplanetary magnetic field with which the planets interact. FYI, that not only controls space weather at a planet, but our earthquake science contribution to that satellite mission that we covered a few days ago was about interplanetary magnetic fields and megaquakes. Up next, a quick stop over at Chandra for their annual archive review. They do an annual collection of the X-ray heavens, and this year they're focusing on Nova remnants, an appropriate move given the last 12 months of observer focus. We are showing here their 2017 video put out for their archive collection because it was the best they've ever done. X-ray eyes make for a gorgeous cosmos. Click the Chandra link, explore around. And now things get a bit confusing, because a weird supercomputer simulation seems to have delivered counterintuitive results. They say about two-thirds of the crust is moving faster than the mantle below, meaning it's actually dragging the mantle around. But the other third is shown to be push and pulls on the cold slabs, plunging into the deep. This is a difficult concept to grasp, and again, it's a computer model because they can't exactly get down and take real observations. It may be totally wrong, but alas, they did use the best updated information on the internal structure, which I will once again reiterate is phenomenally non-homogeneous, has implications for Earth's tilt and rotation. Last but not least, Ohio State researchers believe there is a new kind of black hole. Now this is where all of us plasma electromagnetic proponents need to remember that while the specific physics may need a new suit, it's not like nothing is there. Something is powerful in these active nuclei, causing point lensing events in the cosmos, etc. And so let's take those plasma nuclei of different sizes and energies and shrink them down to super small size. They are suggesting that micro black holes may exist around some stars and they have been entirely missed by science, if they are correct. Regardless of which physics they use, it would actually account for the missing matter in the universe, be normal matter and not those wimps or axions, and you could stop looking for those magic particles. We'd call that a win. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.